Hey there guys, Mr. Marek here again. In this video we are learning about free fall, which is a special case of accelerated motion. The first person to try to describe a free falling object, and thus gravity, um, was this fellow by the name of Aristotle. You may have heard of him. He claimed that heavier objects fall faster towards the ground than lighter objects. And this was part of his four elements, earth, wind, um, fire and water kind of uh, philosophy um, and his basic argument was things that had more earth and water would be more attracted to the ground. This idea uh, was somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 BC. A long time later this Italian guy by the name of Galileo Galilei, most commonly known by just Galileo, actually tested this idea and showed that it was not true. This occurred somewhere in the neighborhood of 1630 A.D., um, which, using a conservative approximation, is about 1900 years after Aristotle first made his claim. Now, the story goes that Galileo tests this idea by dropping cannonballs off of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, um, which is debatable whether or not that actually happened. But what he did do is he did roll things down ramps in order to measure their acceleration and show that the mass of those objects did not matter. And so um, it took about 1900 years for us to finally figure out uh, what objects would fall faster than what other objects. And the answer is, well, they all fall at the same rate. So free fall refers to an object that's falling such that gravity is the only force that is acting on it. So when things are free-falling, gravity is the only thing affecting them. In other words, object in free-fall accelerate because of gravity. And we're going to learn a lot more about gravity as we progress through the year. So the thing about these objects is that their acceleration is the same as the gravitational field. So remember, that's the little lowercase g. And near the surface of the Earth lowercase g has a value of 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And we're going to learn later on um, more precisely what a newton means, but for right now I'll tell you that that's the same as 9.8 meters per second squared. In other words, gravitational field and acceleration have the same units, and due to a happy coincidence we'll learn about later, um, they actually have the same value. So it's kind of nice. We only have to remember the one number of 9.8 meters per second squared uh, rather than two different numbers for the field and the acceleration. So question, why were we so wrong about this free fall for almost 2,000 years? Basically, it's because things have other forces besides gravity that might be acting on them. So one example, if we drop something kind of uh, dense, like a marble, the only thing pulling it down is its weight. But if we took something like a sheet of paper, it would have a significant drag force on it that would balance out its weight. So an example of a force besides gravity causing us to be um, thrown off would be something like drag. You might call that air resistance as well. So the marble is something that is in free fall. The piece of paper is not in free fall. There's another force acting on it. So the rub here is that since drag is more significant for lighter objects, basically these two forces are smaller, um, then it makes it look like the mass actually matters. So here's a question for you. How could you make a piece of paper actually free fall? In other words, how could you get rid of that drag force? It's a good discussion question to think about later. So let's look at a couple of examples of free fall and see if we can kind of put some of the tools that we know um, into describing them. The big idea is that things in free fall will accelerate downward. And they'll accelerate down at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we take the dropping the marble example, if we were to sketch a position time graph and a velocity time graph, 
if we assume that up is positive, which is kind of a basic starting point, then our initial velocity would be zero, our acceleration would be negative, and our initial position would be some positive number. And so our velocity would start at zero and slope downward, getting bigger negatively, bigger going towards the ground. And our position time graph would do something like that. It would start out flat and then get a increasing negative slope. Now we could turn it around and assume that down is positive. If we did that and we change the sign of our acceleration to a plus sign, now our graphs of position versus time and velocity versus time will look something like that. So either way you were to sketch those would be okay, just make sure you're consistent with whatever you're doing. So the idea is that we show something speeding up, basically. That's the big idea there. Let's look at a slightly more complex example. Suppose we were to take the same marble and toss it straight up into the air. A simple picture might look something like this. It starts out with some initial velocity, v naught goes up, comes down. One thing to note is that when it's at its original height, or its original position, its velocity is the opposite of its initial velocity. And that's just due to the symmetry of a parabola. So if we were to sketch a velocity time graph and a position time graph, position time graph might look something like that. It goes up, slows down as it goes up and then comes back down, speeding up as it comes back down. Our velocity time graph would start out at some big positive value, positive being up. As it goes up, it would slow down and eventually stop. Before it can come back down, it's got to stop. And then on its way back down, it'll have a negative velocity. And the velocity will be getting bigger, meaning it moves away from zero. So our velocity time graph might look like that. During the first interval, it's slowing down as it goes up. And then as it comes back down, it speeds up, but it's moving in the negative direction. So we've got one parabola over here one straight line over here because the acceleration doesn't change. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared going down during the entire flight of the marble. So it's kind of important to understand that this graph will be one straight line because gravity always pulls it downward. The slope of that graph is the acceleration, and the acceleration doesn't change. So let's look at an example in context, how we would use this information to figure something out. So suppose we took something like a tennis ball, and we tossed it straight up in the air from the ground level with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. So the kind of question we might be curious about is how high is it after one second? So just like any other kinematics problem, let's list our variables, our knowns and our unknowns. I would say our initial position is zero. So when it asks us how high we're at, um, that's just asking us for position. Let's say the initial velocity is 20 meters per second. Obviously we're given a time of one second. Now the piece of information here that needs to come out of your brain is the acceleration. Since it's free falling, you need to remember it's got an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Of course, we can round that off to 10. And then finally, if we're going to make this number positive, then we have to make this number negative because they're in opposite directions. The velocity is something we don't know, and we're not really asked to find it. We don't need it, so that's just a thing we don't care about. And so if we go to our list of kinematic equations, 
it's real easy. We just find the one that doesn't have the final velocity in it, which would be this equation. And then just solve that for position. So our initial position is 0. And then all we have to do to solve that is take out the initial position, and x is by itself. So substituting in the values, again, that negative sign is real important. Otherwise, we'll get the wrong number. And so 20 meters per second times 1 second is 20 meters. Negative, or, um, 1 half times negative 10 times 1 squared is negative 5 meters. Second squared cancel out. And so it would give you something like 15 meters. Balls up in the air 15 meters after 1 second. Now suppose, just because I'm a crazy physics teacher, we wanted to know what the height was after 3 seconds. Well, we do the same thing. The only thing that changes is the time. So instead of this being one second, we'd make it three seconds now. And crazily enough, we'd get the same answer, 15 meters. And the thing that we have to realize is that the first answer gave us the position while it was going up. And the second answer, three seconds, gave us the position while it was coming back down. So it's at every position twice. It's a parabola, it's symmetrical. Um, so it's just something important to realize there as well. So we'll do some more work on this in class next time. But here are the important things to remember. One, remember for a free-falling object, the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared downward. We can change the sign depending on how we set up our coordinate system, but we need to remember it's always downward. For something that's thrown upwards, the velocity is zero when we get to its highest point. And then for something thrown upwards, when it returns to its original position, then its velocity is the opposite of its initial velocity. And that's just because of the symmetry of a parabola. Lastly, and this is something really important to remember, if we have an initial velocity directed upwards, it's very important we remember to make the acceleration due to gravity negative. So kind of sort of like in this example, our initial velocity is upwards, we made it positive. Therefore, since our acceleration is downward, it needs to be negative. Those are the, very, are the most common things we're going to need to pull out of our brain from this when we're solving problems. Speaking of, that's going to be our goal next time in class, is to understand this a little bit deeper and be able to use it in some context. So, be sure to remember those four important things, and I will see you then. Ta-ta!